Today's project is a very different watch made for electronic enthusiasts, as I will be showing you how to open and disassemble an old school mechanical watch, and how you can make your own modifications to make it a truly unique timepiece. As an homage to electronics, I made a completely new dial made from a PCB, and I think it came out looking rather good. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, and a project really wouldn't be possible without their professional capabilities. As you probably know, a watch dial needs to be quite thin, and PCBWay was one of rare manufacturers able to produce this PCB at the required thickness of 0.2mm. That's 7 times thinner than a standard thickness. So the watch I'm modding here is a Seiko SNKK23 from the Seiko 5 line. This line has seen a huge modding community spring up, as these are both fairly cheap and somewhat elegant in their relatively simple construction, while they still provide excellent automatic watches. This watch in particular cost around $70 on Amazon. The very first thing I did was to remove the metal bracelet. To learn how to open the watch and put it together, I watched a great video from Loomshot, which I will be linking in the video description. I added electrical tape to the back side of the case, so as to not scratch it if my case back remover slipped. I used this tool to open up the back side of the watch, which came off without too much force. With the movement exposed, I removed the crown by pushing on a super tiny lever. The crown needs to be completely inserted while the lever is pushed down and the crown is removed. For the tools I used against the movement, I mostly used plastic toothpicks to avoid scratching the movement as it's quite delicate. I also wore white cotton gloves to not introduce any oils from my hands. The automatic rotor which winds the watch was carefully kept still with a piece of tape to let the power reserve run out. This was important to keep the hands completely still while I continued to work on the watch. When the movement had run out of power, I reinserted the crown and set the time to 12 pm. This makes it easier to later align the hands in the same position which is necessary when you want to keep the day and date switch over at around midnight. To remove the hands I used a simple watch hand remover that could take off all three hands in one go. I protected the dial and hands from any scratches by laying a plastic bag between the dial and the watch hand remover. With the hands removed I could carefully lift off the dial and measure every kind of dimension to rebuild my own dial and dial holder. To model these parts I first recreated the original dial in Autodesk Fusion 360. I then created a projection based on the original dial with a few tiny margins to make my life easier later on. Autodesk Eagle, which is what I use to design PCBs, has this really nice integration with Fusion 360. This let me push the board I made in Fusion to Eagle and it kept all the dimensions in sync while I refined the measurements. To make the PCB dial I created a new circuit component meant to be the hour markers and I spaced these out and made traces between these to create an interesting look reminiscent of a regular PCB. For this dial the traces are a huge part of the design so I made them nice and thick and made sure to keep the routing symmetrical. Also I didn't fill in the top layer with a ground plane because that would give the traces less contrast and make them less visible in the final watch. I added a few details with the silk screen as well, like minute and half minute markers. And to finish off the design I added my own logo on the layers for exposed copper. While waiting for the custom parts to arrive in the mail I made a few other modifications as well to pass the time. For the final assembly I wanted a black leather strap instead of the metal bracelet. I found this one I liked with white stitching details which I removed and replaced with an orange thread, just to make it look a bit more lively. This was just regular sewing thread which I double threaded in the needle and passed through the holes three times. The stitching was finished off with a simple knot on the back side of the strap. Now to match this orange thread I also decided to paint the second hand. I chose a similar orange color in a glossy enamel paint. To apply the paint the second hand was held in place by its stem using a tiny clamp. Since the second hand is so small, the shape can very easily be distorted if there's too much paint sticking to one of the sides. So I had to be careful to not let any paint overflow the edges 
and here good old surface tension came in handy. I was super excited when the PCBs arrived because this was really something else. These super thin PCBs don't have the classic hot air solder leveling you usually see as a tin color on the exposed pads. Instead, the exposed copper gets covered in liquid gold. To mount PCB dial, I made a 3D printed adapter which could be glued to the circuit board and later grip onto the movement. As watchmaking usually involves extremely tight margins, I had to do a lot of revisions to land on a final design, which could be reproduced on my home printer. To make alignment easier, the PCB had a white line going down the middle of the backside, which was used to eyeball align the PCB through a couple of matching slits in the movement holder. Now I could simply add a few drops of super glue while maintaining the alignment. After letting the glue dry thoroughly and the fumes were aired out, it was finally time to put all these different parts together. The dial holder snapped onto the movement, so I aligned the two movement pegs and the date window before press fitting the movement. The next step was to add the hands, and at this stage I really wished for a pair of plastic non-magnetic tweezers. I did see other people on the internet use mounting putty, and that worked wonders for holding the hands while aligning them. I also found you could use the backside of a regular big pen to push the hour hand into its position. I had to use this as I was uh, too cheap to buy a proper hand press, but it still worked out great. The minute hand had a smaller diameter, so the big pen wouldn't work for pushing this as well. I tried to 3D print a pushing tool for the minute hand, but my 3D printer couldn't make anything that detailed. What I did instead was to 3D print a small solid cylinder, then I found some bare copper wire, slightly thicker than the hole in the minute hand. I heated this with lighter and pushed it into the plastic cylinder to make an indentation. Now I could use this cylinder to press fit the minute hand and it was aligned in its proper position. I also used the flat backside of the same cylinder to push down the second hand as this didn't have a tiny hole to account for when press fitting, so a simple flat surface did the job. The clearances on the hands were really tight, so I checked they didn't overlap by observing through a macro lens. This confirmed the hands weren't rubbing against each other, which is something I would prefer to discover at this stage and not when the watch was completely assembled. Now it was just a matter of placing all the parts into the watch body, I placed the case over the watch movement, pressed it down and checked that the rotor could spin freely. When this was confirmed I once again inserted the crown which also helps keep the dial in its proper position and keep the movement from shifting around inside the watch case. The case back was screwed down as tight as I could by hand before once more covering the backside with electrical tape to protect against possible scratches. Then I used my trusty case back remover to further tighten the case. Once again I checked the rotor could spin freely, now on the inside of the case. When it did, I let out a sigh of relief, as calibrating the 3D printed dial holder for this part was a huge hassle. The final step was to attach the modified watch strap using a strap tool, and the watch was finally ready to wear. I've been wearing it for some time now and I've grown really fond of it. It's truly a unique timepiece, both in design and in its history. It was also a lot of fun combining a traditional field, such as watchmaking, with my more technology-oriented hobbies, such as 3D modeling and PCB design. I hope you liked this project. As always, you will find a link in the description with both detailed written instructions and downloadable files. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff.